So what's up guys, uh, Saish here from Optimal Physics and this is the part 2 of the first chapter that is uh, units, dimensions and uh, measurements. Now I've broken down this chapter into three parts. The first part has already been covered. This is going to be second part and the third part uh, I'll upload uh, maybe tomorrow. So um, in the first part we covered and we talked about um, SI system of units. We learned how to define a unit, what should be qualities of a unit, things like that. And we also saw that there are seven fundamental quantities which SI system defines. There are two supplementary units and there are also, uh, then we also talked about derived units. Now quickly let me go through what are derived units. Uh, so derived quantities are those which come from physical quantities. They don't need, they need physical quanti fundamental quantities to define them. So let's say for example, we are talking about say speed. Uh, now speed is basically distance by time, right? Now so distance is a measure of length and time you measure, time is time, right? You don't need anything else to define them. So we say speed depends on two of the fundamental quantities, which is length and time. And we have the unit of speed, which is equal to meters per second, right? Now, same thing, you can figure out um, how the other derived units such as acceleration, velocity. Since you know the definition of uh, acceleration, it is a rate of change of velocity. You know, it is velocity by time. So velocity in turn depends on length and time. So acceleration should also depend on length and time. But this powers to which it is raised, all these things we are going to talk about in a while. That will come under dimensions. Okay. So as of now, uh, all you need to understand is uh, the derived quantities need fundamental quantities to define them. Okay. Now, as you can see, uh, I'll be uh, recording all these videos like this because it's very easy and convenient. I'm recording it from a Wacom tablet, and uh, you'll be seeing me uh, down here in a very small screen. And whatever I want to explain you, I'll put it up on the board here. Okay. So now let's start with today's uh, topics. So in today's topic, we're going to talk about uh, the way length is measured, the way mass is measured, and the way time is measured. And um, then we're going to go into dimensional analysis. Okay. So let's first start with uh, length. Okay. Now we all know that day to day activities we measure length using a meter scale. I have a meter scale here. I don't know where it went. Oh, it's here. So this is a meter scale. The meter scale can measure the smallest distance as a millimeter, so which is 10 to the power minus 3 meters. Now if you use a vernier, you'll be using vernier in your laboratories to do experiments. I have a digital vernier here. You'll be using probably a manual version. And uh, verniers can measure the length up to 10 to the power 0.1 mm. So 10 to the power minus 4 of a meter. You also have screw gauges. So these are the common units which will be common, you know, what do you call them? Uh, apparatus or um, uh, tools which you'll be using for measuring the length. But when it comes to measuring uh, distances between stars and such big distances, uh, there is a small topic which I want to cover here, which is what you call as a uh, method of parallax. Okay. So let's say, for example, we want to measure the distance of a star S from Earth. Okay. Here is Earth and you want to measure the distance of star S, which is located here from Earth. So what you do is you find, you observe S from two different locations on Earth. Let's say there is a location A here. There is another location B here. Okay, you observe this star from A, and you observe this star from B. Since you are the one who is observing, you can actually find how far this A and B are separated. So let's say A and B are separated by a distance of, say, B. Okay. Let's say the distance between A point A and point B is B meters, whatever it is. Now I'm observing the star S from point A, and I'm also observing it from point B. So what I can find is this angle, which is what you call a par parallax angle. So this angle, let's say this angle is called as theta. This theta is something which I can find. Okay. It's under my control. But what we are interested here is to find how far S is located from 
earth now as you guys know the stars are usually located very far away from the planet our planet right so let's say the distance that you are going to observe from a is say d1 we really don't know this at at this point of time let's say you say you're going to observe s is at a distance of d2 from point b now this point a and b are relatively very close to each other as compared to the the distance the star is from the earth so i can say b by d1 or even b by d2 for that matter is going to be very very small right it's going to be way less than 1 so can i treat this s a b to be an arc of a circle i can so by that i can say d1 since s is located very far away d1 and d2 will, will be almost same let me call it say as d okay now this d becomes a diameter of your circle i can imagine this to be a circle with s as the center and ab as its arc isn't it since b is very small compared to d b by d is very much much less than 1 i can imagine this to be an arc isn't it so i can say d which is the diameter times this angle theta if i measure this in radians can i say that is equal to b i can isn't it so now i know theta which is the parallax angle this has to be in radians i'm interested in finding d and i also know b so basically d is equal to b by theta this is how you find the distance of a star from the earth so i hope i was very clear with this so now uh, we will also talk about how do we go about finding the diameter or the size of a particular star now let's say again we are interested in that star s but i'm going to draw a bigger circle here okay let's say s is the star we are interested in we are interested in measuring how big is this star so let me call this to be the diameter of the star and this i'll say is d okay i'm going to observe this star from earth this is earth okay you are somewhere here you can observe the star so what you do in this case is you take your telescope and locate this end point of the star and you observe the star okay pardon me for my drawing so this is earth this is the point where you are there let me call it a you will point your telescope at one end of the star and you will point your telescope again at the other end of the star right so by doing this you can measure this angle that's this diameter of the star i mean the end points of the what is the angle that the end points of the star subtend at your location let me call it alpha isn't it now by the same argument which we used previously let's say this is d1 and this is also this is d2 i can say d1 and d2 are going to be almost same because star is located so far away which is almost going to be equal to the distance of the star from the earth isn't it which we already found d we already found in the last section as equal to uh, b by theta so that d is known to us isn't it now i can again approximate since d is very much so large i can also approximate this to be an arc of a circle so i can say d times this alpha measured in radians is equal to this length of the arc which is almost equal to the diameter of this isn't it so i know d i know alpha i can i find d yes you can so you can use this equation to find d which is the size of the star diameter of the star this is how uh, this is a very small topic actually in uh, maharashtra uh, state board uh, syllabus so i have covered this so this is the method of parallax uh, if there is any question in this just drop it in the comments below if i was not clear uh, 
okay and any problem i hope you should be able to solve with this concept which i told you uh, now let's talk about the next topic that is how do we measure so that was about length now let's talk about mass right in day to day life we'll use things like kgs or pound if you're based in india it's usually kgs so we use kgs to measure uh, mass in day to day life but when it comes to uh, measuring mass at atomic level you know or even subatomic level kg is a huge unit because mass of atoms are going to be way small so for that we define something called as atomic mass unit you know uh, unified in fact it is called as unified atomic mass unit and it is represented as 1 u this is one unified atomic mass unit is defined as 1 by 12 the mass of one atom of carbon 12 isn't it so if we take one atom of carbon 12 divided by 12 that's going to be one unified mass okay and i'll jot i'll write down the value here for one unified mass it's uh, you don't have to remember this value it will be but if you can it's okay so this value is 1.66 into 10 to the power minus 27 kgs this is one atomic mass unit okay now uh, so that was about how we go about measuring mass so uh, more about this in chemistry you will learn but uh, at this point it's enough to know that one atomic mass unit is 1.66 into 10 to the power minus 27 kg now we'll move on and we'll talk about the next topic which is how do we go about measuring time right now as far as time is concerned we use we talk in seconds minutes days hours you know things like that so you know one solar uh, day is defined as the time is usually 24 hours it's the time interval between noon of one day and the noon for the, the next day and what you do is you average this so noon today and noon tomorrow so you average this time over a year and that is called as a mean solar day so that's how you find what is called as a mean solar day uh what you call as dimensional analysis okay so when it comes to dimensions so what exactly is dimension we talked about derived quantity we talked about fundamental quantities now dimension or dimensional formula or dimensional equation whatever it is is basically the powers to which you are going to raise the fundamental quantities in order to find in order to obtain the that particular quantities now let's say we are talking about say speed again i'll come back to that example now speed how do you obtain is basically distance by time right now how are we going to measure distance length distance is basically length so what you do is as far as mechanics is concerned these are the three things which you need to keep in mind there are seven si uh, fundamental si define si system defines seven fundamental quantities but as far as mechanics is concerned you need to talk about mass length and time right so m stands for mass l stands for length and t stands for time okay so speed is basically a uh, distance by time a distance as you guys know is a form of length so i'm going to write l on top and for time i'm going to write t so the dimensional formula for speed is going to be l t to the power minus 1 and in m that is mass it is zero there is no mass coming into picture anyway so this is how we write the dimensional formula for speed m raised to 0 L is to one and t is to minus one, right? So which means it has one unit in length and minus one unit in time. Now I will make it clear by another example. Let's say if you are interested in knowing about dimensional formula for force. Now what do you know about force? Force you guys would have studied is the rate at which the momentum changes, right? So it is momentum by time. 
in a crude form i've written this it's actually the rate at which the momentum is changing i should write d by dt of momentum now what is momentum momentum is basically mass and you have velocity into velocity right and you have time again in the denominator coming from here now let's write about dimensional formula for force so you have mass here i'm going to write m for this what is the formula for velocity you already found speed and velocity is going to have the same thing speed velocity is basically distance displacement by time so it's again l and the denominator there is going to be a t so l to the power minus 1 and here again in the denominator there is going to be a t the dimensional formula for force is m l t to the power minus 2 so m means it's one unit here one unit here so that's how we write the dimensional formula for force okay and let's talk about another example let's take uh, energy for that example okay now all forms of energy as you guys know will have the same unit isn't it so when you when you are asked to find dimensional formula for any of this uh, you know uh, physical quantity uh, what you need to do you would need to remember a particular formula for that i mean anything which comes to your mind for example energy if you know as potential energy is mgx use that formula if you know uh, kinetic energy as half mv square you can use that let's say i'm going to use half mv square as a reference formula to obtain the dimensions of energy so energy is half mv square okay so using this what i can find is it is m and v square so m is what basically mass so i'm going to write m for that what is v what is the dimensions for these are basically the dimensions of each of this i'm going to write what is the dimension for v velocity it's l to the power minus 1 and everything is raised to 2 so dimensional formula for energy is v m l square t to the power minus 2 isn't it so that was all about how to find a dimensional formulas for each of this uh, physical quantity which you are uh, which is given to you now we will talk about what are the applications of using this dimensions dimensional formulas whatever it is so the first and the most important thing is to check an equation is right or not so i'll say it is to find the correctness of an equation for example if i give an equation using dimensional analysis you can see whether that equation is right or not you may you can actually say if the equation is wrong but you cannot always say if it is right you can say it is dimensionally right but you cannot always say that it is right i'll tell you why i said that let's take an example of an equation which you already know okay you have studied this equation f equals to ut plus half a t square this is one of the equation of motion which you usually learn in 9th standard what is s s is displacement what is u initial velocity a is acceleration and t is time right now what we'll do is we'll write a dimensional formula for each one of these terms and then comment on what we observe okay and let's say what is the dimensional formula for s displacement it is length right basically so i'm going to write l in m and t is going to be zero let me write it m raised to zero l raised to one t raised to zero right what about u this is velocity so l t to the power minus 1 So we're going to write m raised to zero, l t to the power minus one. What about t? M raised to zero, l raised to zero, t to the power one. What about a? A is going to be m raised to zero. It is acceleration is meter per second square. So l t to the power minus two. Right. Now let's find what is the dimensional formula for each of these terms. So u t. is going to be u and t when i multiply both of them the dimensional formula is going to be l t raised to minus 1 and t raised to 1 it will get cancelled so 
So it's going to be m raised to 0, l raised to 1, and t raised to 0. This is going to be the dimensional formula for this term. Now half here has no dimension. So what about dimensional formula for this whole term, a t square? So a will be m raised to 0, l t to the power minus 2, and again I'm going to multiply by t square, which is t square. So it's going to come as l raised to 1, t to the power minus 2 and plus 2 will get cancelled, so t raised to 0 and m raised to 0. Now what is the dimensional formula for s? I have it here already. So you can see that on the left hand side I have m raised to 0, l t raised to 0 and the right hand side I have the same thing. So it means, and this is what I actually expect, isn't it? So I'm going to add these two terms so they should have the same dimension. So in the dimension, the first thing, the application which tells us is to check whether the equation is dimensionally right or not. Now this equation is dimensionally right because the dimension on the left hand side are matching to both the terms. So I mean when there is a plus sign, you will see that dimension of the quantities which are added or which are subtracted, even if there was a minus sign, the dimensions of both these quantities have to be same and it has to be same as the what is there on the left hand side. right? But if I, there is one problem with this, that is, if instead of half, I had one third, right, or instead of a plus sign, I had say a minus sign here, even then this equation would have been dimensionally correct. So, but you know this equation is not right, isn't it? This is not an equation of motion for a straight line. So as I told you before, this dimensional analysis will help you to know if the equation is dimensionally wrong. Now for example, if I give you this equation, let's do this uh, example quickly, v square equals to u square plus 2s, okay. Now you guys probably would have figured out whether this is right or not because you already know that, but let's do it the way we learned. What is the dimensional formula for v square? Let's do it quickly. V is velocity, it is going to be L t to the power minus 1, so I'm going to raise it to 2, so it's going to be L square t to the power minus 2. What about U square? It's going to be same, L square t to the power minus 2, because it's again a velocity which is raised to 2. What about S? 2 here is nothing, it's a, it has no dimension, so S is going to be L t to the power 0, m to the power 0, isn't it? I'll write here again m raised to 0 m raised to 0. So you can see here that this equation is wrong because the term on the left hand side has a dimension of l square t to the power minus 2. Here one of them is having l square t to the power minus 2 but what about the other one? It has just dimension of l. So it's like you are adding a mango and a potato, isn't it? You cannot add, I mean that was okay example, right? So you are adding a mango and a potato. Uh, both of them, you can either add both mangoes or you can either add both potatoes. So that doesn't make sense to add something which is dimension of length and you're adding something which is dimension of L squared to the power minus 2 to something which is dimension of length. Doesn't make sense. So this equation is wrong. So you get, as you guys know, there should have been an A which is acceleration here which would have corrected this equation. Okay. So that was about the first application. Now we'll talk about next application. Uh, so next application is to find the relationship between different units. Now I will explain you this with an example. Now let's say we know force in SI system has a unit of Newton, right? So what does a Newton mean? It is basically kg meter per second square, isn't it? But in CGS system, what is CGS system? I talked about this already. It means centimeter grams and seconds. We have the unit of force as dyne, okay? And that is basically, instead of kg, I'll be having grams. Instead of meter, I'll be having centimeters per second square 
So one dyne is basically one gram centimeter per second square. Now, if I want to find a relationship between these two, how do I go about dimensional analysis? Again, this is going to help you. So let's say one newton is basically x dyne. Okay. Now, what is the dimensional formula for newton? I mean, the force is basically force, right? Just the units are different. The so dimensional formula for force, you know, is mass times acceleration, which is mass. Acceleration is L to the power minus 2. Now, I'm going to represent it with a subscript 1 because I'm talking about Newton's system of unit. I mean, the SI system of units here. And I'm going to write again the dimensional formula here. So this is 1 times this is equal to x times dyne. And dyne is also going to have the same formula, but it has a different you know, unit for uh, mass, different unit for length, and different unit for time. So I'm going to represent it with subscript 2 just to make that difference. So I'm interested in finding what is this x. So what I'm going to do is x is basically m1 by m2 times l1 by l2 and t1 by t2 to the power of minus 2. Right? So x is equal to, what is m1? m1 is the unit of length in this system. Now this is SI system, here is CGS system. So unit of length in SI system is meter, right? I'm going to write it as 1 meter. What about m2? It is centimeter, which is 10 to the power minus 2 meter, right? Oh, sorry. Uh, this was about length right what about mass so actually this term is what i wrote here first i will write this term what is m1 m1 is a kg what about m2 m2 is gram that is how many kgs both the units have to be same so i'm just converting it 10 to the power minus 3 kgs both of them have the same time unit, that is one second, one second, it's going to anyway cancel, so I'm not even going to write this. So as you can see, this one meter, one meter, one kg, one kg is cancelling, so you will find x to be, this 10 to the power 2 will go on top, 10 to the power 3, minus 3 will go on top, it becomes 10 to the power 5. So you found that one newton is basically 10 to the power 5 dynes. So this is another application which actually helps you to find a relationship between two different system of units. We'll talk about the third application that is to establish a relationship between the physical quantities. So I'll write it as relationship between physical quantities. Okay, now in order to obtain this thing, there should be something which you already know. Now, um, what do I mean by that? Let me give you an example. If say for example, a classic example which is always given here is to obtain the expression for the time period of a simple pendulum. Okay, now if I know the time period depends on say length and, and the acceleration due to gravity, that is g. I need to find relationship between this time period t, this is time period, this is the length of the simple pendulum, this is acceleration due to gravity. Okay, I really don't know what this relationship is, but let's say there exists a relationship and I give you these things. I mean, you cannot solve this problem without knowing that it depends on length on g. So whenever somebody gives you a problem like this to find a relationship, they will tell you that certain parameter depends on this parameter and this parameter. So you know that it depends on these two parameters. Okay. Now, let's say we don't know this relationship. So I'll just put t is equal to k, some constant, which won't have a dimension, and l, which is length, raised to a, and g, which is acceleration due to gravity, raised to b. 
So this is an expression which I am just speculating. I really don't know what A is. I don't know what B is. Which is that's why I put it as unknowns. These are unknowns to me at this point of time. Let's see what you can do with dimensional analysis. What is the dimensional formula for T? M raised to 0, L raised to 0, T. Isn't it? What is the dimensional formula for L? M raised to 0, T raised to 0, L. What about G? It's acceleration, right? Due to gravity or whatever it is, it's, it's up to, after all an acceleration. So it's m raised to 0, l t to the power minus 2, isn't it? And k is without dimension. So if I raise this l, which is the dimension, this is the dimensional formula, 2a, and this g, the power of b, and multiply these two, I'm going to ultimately have m raised to 0 raised to a, m will have again, anyway 0. What about t? t 0a plus minus 2b. So t will have minus 2b. What about l? l raised to a and l raised to b. So it will be l raised to a plus b. So this is going to be dimensional formula on the right hand side and this is what you have as dimensional formula on the left hand side. I already told you this both should represent the same thing. That means in mass they should have m raised to 0 which is okay. But what about l? l here it is l raised to 0 and here it is l raised to a plus b. So this a plus b has to add up to 0, isn't it? So I have my first equation, a plus b is equal to 0. Here it says t raised to 1. Here it says t raised to minus 2b. Both of them have to be same. So 1 has to be equal to minus 2b. I know value of b as minus half. So what should be value of a? From the first equation, I find value of a is equal to plus half, isn't it? So I found a and b. These are two values which were unknown. I found this a and b. Now let's write this equation t is equal to k times I wrote l raised to a and g raised to uh, b right and value of b I found it as minus half value of a I found it as plus half so what does it mean k square root of l by g square root means half right and I put g in the denominator because it is minus half isn't this the equation which you learned you learned this thing at the school level and you actually know what is this k it is 2 pi right the time period is 2 pi root over of l by g this was the formula which you learned in school and we did it now we could not find this value of 2 pi it has to be found by experiments but uh, at least you can get this relationship that there is a root over l by g this relation you can find out and there are multiple problems which in which what they will give you is uh, typical we are going to anyway solve lots of problems but a typical problem would be uh, a physical quantity say a depends on quantity b c and d okay and what you need to find is the relationship what is the relationship between a b b c and d so every time what you need to do is raise this to say some values x, y, z, write a dimension for this, write a dimension for this, write a dimension for this, I mean dimensional equation, raise it to x, y, z, find the total dimensional equation on the left hand side, compare it with right hand side, equate both of them. So whenever you have m raised to say some value, l raised to some value, and t raised to some another value, now you're going to equate this value with what you get m on this side. So for example, m raised to you get x here, okay, x plus y plus z. And here you get 0, m raised to 0. Okay, so 0 equals to x plus y plus z. This becomes your first equation. Similarly, you're going to find the equation for L. You're going to find the equation, you're going to find it in a similar way. And T. This is just an example. We're going to solve lots of problems in this uh, later. But uh, that was it for today's video, guys. So uh, I will get back to you in the next video. We're going to talk about, uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about errors. And we're also going to talk about, before that, significant figures. And with that, we will be done with chapter 1. These are the only two topics which are left. So I'll cover it in the next video. Till then, see you. Bye-bye. And uh, hope you guys are having fun um, seeing my videos. And please drop a comment below and give it a thumbs up if you like the video. And don't forget to subscribe and press the, press the bell icon so that you get a notification whenever I upload a new video. So that was it, guys. Bye-bye.